Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. And I want to take y'all into where a lot of the money came from the fat man with front with the government and the city to be able to spend so much money. Eminent domain is where it came from. My grandfather owned two blocks where the Fisher Freeway is located now. An eminent domain made him sell them to them. And he also owned some property where a company called Hudson's, Hudson's Annex, was right there where Ford Stadium is right now. And they bought that property out for my grandfather under eminent domain as well. And after they bought that, my grandfather throughout eminent domain had over $425,000. And we talk about, this is probably the early 60s before I was ever born. Understand, count up what $425,000 is worth in the late 50s, cause that's when my grandfather had it. He had a beer and wine license. He had another apartment building that wasn't in the area of where they was buying eminent domain out. And my father and Lige would have that after my grandfather passed. My father was about 16 years old when my grandfather passed. He was about two years old when his mother passed. So he lost his mother when he was two years old and he lost his father when he was 16 years old and Lige was about 21. So Lodge and him had $425,000 in the bank willed to them to split from their father. And also my father said, back in that day, old timers really didn't trust and like banks. So when my grandfather died, he had $100,000 cash money at the house that him and Lodge also took. So him and Lodge, back in about 1950, 55, somewhere up in there, had $525,000. Now tell me what that was worth then, and that's what they started with. About $525,000. And as the story goes, they got broke out hanging, running across the country, running around the world, the Bahamas, all of that, to see the world. But let me say something else to all of y'all. I want y'all to understand throughout this story while I'm talking about money and eminent domain and all of that. It used to be a store that was real popular called Cousins. It was a clothing store and the name of it was Cousins. And everybody who was anybody in the city of Detroit wanted to get shot went down to Cousins. It was the number one store in the city at that time. Understand this Cousins. And also, his jeweler, Russ, was right around by Cousins. It was the place to be. Down there, that area around Federal Collateral, right down there by where the Trolley Plaza, Trolley Plaza and all that is now, that's where Russ Cleaver was at the time. And that's also where Cousins was. Cousins didn't leave Detroit till he burnt the store up then he moved out there on Southfield, about Southfield and 10, 10 and a half miles, somewhere in Southfield. And uh, Russ would go out on Big Beaver. Skyline Diamond Center is where Russ Cleaver would go when he left the city of Detroit. He went out on Big Beaver to Skyline Diamond Center. Understand that and Cousins moved out to Southfield, the king of clothes. His daughter was a one hit wonder. Cousin's daughter had one big hit on the radio at the time, and everybody, that's Cousin's daughter, the clothing store, Cousin's. His daughter had a big hit. But let me move on. The fat man, everybody in his crew knew this, and this was legendary. This was legendary. Anybody in Andy Jackson's crew had a Cadillac paid for by him and a house. As the Black Dispatch, if you don't believe what I'm saying. Eddie Jackson didn't believe in his crew member not having a Cadillac paid for and a house paid for. He had a certain standard 
for his crew. He said, if I'm living like this, my crew got to be up there with me. He didn't believe in living up here and his crew lived down here on the ground, as George Benson say. He living way up here, as George Jetson say. A high rise in the sky, and he got his crew living down here on the ground, as my man George Benson say, down here on the ground. But Eddie Jackson wasn't that kind of hustler, baby. If you was living and hustling with him, you gonna be up there with George Jetson in the sky, baby. Eddie Jackson made sure every nigga running with him that called himself part of his crew had a Cadillac paid for. And this motherfucker named the one-eyed Cyclops, Bubba. Bubba came to the fat man and said, Hey, I heard if you was Eddie Jackson's crew, you got a Cadillac paid for. Where's mine? I'm part of the Eddie Jackson crew, ain't I? This is what the one-eyed Cyclops, Bubba, said to fat man. Fat man told Bubba, Go ahead on out there and pick you out a Cadillac and let me know. Now he thinking Bubba is going to go down to Coffee Cadillac because that's basically where they was buying most of their Cadillacs from, coffee. They used to take the front window out and let them pull it off the showroom floor out of the front window and leave. That's how tough they was at Coffee Cadillac. Coffee Cadillac after they buy a Cadillac that was on the showroom floor, would take the window down and they would drive that Cadillac off the showroom floor and hit the streets of Detroit, baby. The fat man used to love to pull out the showroom when they let take the window out of Coffee Cadillac and him and the Black Dispatch come out of Coffee Cadillac handling and getting down. But let me go into a little more of the story. Understand this. Eddie Jackson used to say this, and I think Black Butch and Courtney Brown can back him up on this. And he used to say this famously all the time. I didn't gave away more than most niggas gonna ever make in their life. I didn't gave away more than most niggas gonna ever make in their lifetime. And he meant that. He said it. Every one of his crew members had a house paid for Peter Gunn. Black Butch asked all of them, Courtney Brown, every one of his crew had a house paid for. And every one of his crew had a Cadillac paid for. Compliments of Eddie Jackson, the fat man, the magic fat man, was legend for that shit there. Buying a nigga a house and a Cadillac paid for. Because he always tried to teach a nigga how the game was really supposed to go. The nigga on the top ain't supposed to take all the fat out of the package for the niggas on the bottom don't make any money. See, what's going on today, the niggas on the top take all the goddamn fat out the package. They tell me, you supposed to be able to cut fentanyl to eternity. And they tell me niggas out here buying fentanyl and can't put nothing on it. So a nigga that took all the fat out of fentanyl, I hear, because I don't fuck with it. I wouldn't dream of fucking with it. Count me out, baby. But I keep my ears to the streets on what's going on and what's happening. But they tell me you can cut that fentanyl a thousand, two thousand times. But these niggas on the streets buy it and can't cut it nan time. What kind of shit is that? They taking all the fat out of the product at the top, baby. They taking all the fat out of the product at the top. They ain't leaving the little fella down here on the ground, as George Benson say, no room to come up. See, that's the problem with the game today. A nigga ain't leaving no niggas on the bottom, no room to come up. And that's a problem when you expect a nigga to take 20 years for you in federal penitentiary and he been running for high behind you, working for you, not himself. Because if a nigga ain't coming off and got to see you every day for what he get, he working for you. He ain't working for himself because he ain't got nothing to work for. Every day you got to get up and go buy a gram from a nigga. How can you possibly be working for yourself and you going up buying a gram from a nigga? How can you possibly be working for yourself? You go buy a sack of fentanyl, which you're supposed to be able to cut into eternity, and you can't cut it at all. 
Ain't that awful funny? The TV, the advertisement on TV said, you can't cut fentanyl enough. Well, I found out these niggas done found out how to cut fentanyl more than enough. Understand that. They know how to cut fentanyl down more than enough where you can't put shit on it. Understand, they didn't find out how to weaken it. I knew in the game, somebody gonna find out how to cut it and bring it down to its lowest level, baby. Believe that. And they say, the big man on the top is riding Rolls Royces, Bentleys, Lamborghinis, and everything else. And his crew walking around here raggedy as a flea lock, talking about that's the, his crew. You ought to be ashamed of yourself talking about you part of his crew and he riding Bentley, Rolls Royces, and Lamborghinis and you riding a goddamn Chrysler. You ought to be ashamed of yourself talking about you are a part of his crew and you riding around here in a goddamn 300 Chrysler and he riding a Rolls Royce. He riding the real deal and you riding the imitation and you say you part of his crew. I like to know how Cause soon as you go to jail, that same nigga gonna leave you in there stinking. See, it was rules to the game in my day. You never left a nigga in jail, ever. You never left a nigga in jail. But now, a nigga wanna say, oh, he should have some money to get himself out. That's the first excuse these sometimey, no good, low level, low life that ass big fellas out here today say, oh, he should have his own money to get out. But he running behind you every day and you expect him to take 20 years in penitentiary. So I tell you what, go ahead on and leave him in there stinking and you're going to find out exactly how it feel to be sitting in that same goddamn penitentiary cell. And you're going to wish you had took a few dollars out your pockets and got that man out of jail and got that man a lawyer to help him out. Whether he had the money to do it or not, it's going to be for your best interest in the end, brother. Don't forget that. Being cheap and stingy going to cost you. And I tell y'all, look at Motown Mafia. Rudolph said it best. That is the shit that kept niggas from killing the fat man more than anything. He was a sheriff and he looked out for his crew. So when niggas would talk about coming to get the fat man, robbing and killing, his crew would run them niggas off before the fat man even heard about it. See, Dale would be to knock them niggas down for even talking about it. Cause the fat man took care of his crew. He didn't ride nothing. It ain't a car Eddie Jackson had that C.D.L. Kincaid, Black Butch, Courtney Brown, and the rest of his crew couldn't drive. From a Rolls Royce, goddammit, to a Cadillac, and I want to say something before I go, and I'm pretty good at this one. You got a Rolls Royce, it costs a hell of a lot of money. Beautiful to ride in, all of that. But I'm going to give y'all some real fact. And it come from Eddie the Fat Man Jackson, who drove them all. And I'm going to leave y'all on this one. And I'm going to move on. A Rolls Royce might cost a whole lot more money than a Cadillac. But don't put this in your pipe and smoke it. And for anybody who got both of them, chime in and tell me what you think. A Rolls Royce costs way more than a Cadillac. But remember this, it don't ride no better. That Cadillac ride as good as that Rolls Royce do. That American luxury Cadillac rides just as good as the Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce just costs more. But that Cadillac baby rides just as good and that's coming from Eddie the Fat Man Jackson who had three Rolls Royces and over a hundred Cadillacs. And he said a Cadillac ride as good as a Rolls Royce any day. And that's coming from the fat man, Eddie Jackson. He said on that Rolls Royce, the thing about it is, when you pull up in that motherfucker, everybody running to bust them doors open, baby. Oh, every motherfucker you see is running to valet and bust that door for them Rolls Royces when they pull up. 
They is the quickest motherfucker to get you a valet that you ever want to see. Pull up in a Rolls Royce, a nigga come running from around the block. Man, that's a Rolls. Let me park that motherfucker. That's how niggas act about Rolls Royce. But a Cadillac ride just is good. Check it out for yourself if you're in the position, baby. Ride the Rolls around. Then go buy the finest Cadillac truck, that new one for about $150,000. And ride it, compared to that Rolls Royce, you spent over five or $600,000 for. And tell me if that Rolls Royce ride any better than that Cadillac. Because any the fat man Jackson say it don't. The Rolls don't ride no better than a Cadillac, but it's more of an eye catcher. See, when you're in that Rolls Royce, you're going to catch the eye of the police and every bro and every nigga, everybody around you. That Rolls Royce is an eye catcher. But the Cadillac ride, this is good, baby. And that's from Eddie the Fat Man Jackson. Simmons Law, check her out and she'll help you out. Simmons Law, check her out and she'll help you out. And my father used to talk about how a lot of niggas used to blame him because they didn't come up. Eddie, you could have let me come up. You the one that held me down. The Fat Man said he heard that more than his share in life. Niggas telling him he could have bought him up. And he held him down. And that's the black dispatch. That wasn't true at all, the fat man say. If I held you down, it was because you was bullshit. Understand that. If I held you down and didn't put you on, it was because you was bullshit, not me, baby. Because I was out there letting them go. And this is real, true street crime on YouTube, Red Dot, Red Shoes, Simmons Law. Check her out and she'll help you out, baby. Simmons Law. Check her out and she will help you out. Jelani's Taste and Table. World-class chef. Straight out of Baker's Culinary College. I don't know what he gonna feature for October for you ghouls and gobbles on that 420. But when he tell me, I'm gonna tell y'all what he featuring for Halloween special 420 style, baby. So check out Jelani's Taste and Table and stay tuned for that Halloween treat, 420 style, baby. Uh, and top tier cuts, 313, Super Ken for the weekend. Top tier cut, 313, Super Ken is for the weekend. And what y'all think about what I'm saying? Do most of these niggas take all the fat out the package and don't let another nigga come up? See, the fat man used to leave a nigga 80. Understand that. He give a nigga a package he guaranteed to make some money on. And asked the black to scratch about that. The fat man was careful not to take all the fat out the package. Because he didn't want a nigga running around for him, talking about he running for him and he ain't making no money. Eddie Jackson asked Black Butch, and this is a fact. Eddie Jackson wanted you to work for yourself. He didn't want to carry you. He wanted you to buy your own package and be your own man. And this is what I'm saying about Black Butch. Ask him if these things ain't true. Eddie Jackson didn't want to carry no nigga. He wanted a nigga to step up to the plate and hit a grand slam home run. And as many of them he set up to hit a grand slam home run, such as my man Demetrius Holloway. And I got to say, rest in peace 32 years later yesterday. Peace, love, and it's always a sore spot in my heart. And it's always hard to say goodbye. That is one of the hardest goodbyes. My dad, 250D, my uncle Fred, I done had some hard goodbyes to say. But they had to be said. Understand that? So to all of you, rest in peace from Eddie Baby. Love and respect for all of you. And understand this. Go out and love somebody today. Don't be a hater. Go out and love somebody and give a nigga some love, not some hate. And don't take all the fat out the package today. Leave a nigga some room so he can come up. Understand that. Leave a nigga some room so he can come up. They tell me as hard as you can hit that fifth and all, you ought to be able to leave a nigga a little room for him to hit it too and make a few dollars. Understand that. If you can't hit fentanyl and make a few dollars, use a goddamn fool to be selling it. All on the TV, all you hear, you can hit fentanyl, you can't cut it enough. 
and they tell me that shit they selling is overcut. <laughs> These niggas have figured out how to fuck anything up. That's one for Malcolm X. And I'm going to leave y'all on that one from Malcolm X about the Nation of Islam. Look at the movie carefully. And Malcolm say, these niggas will figure out how to fuck anything up. The greatest black movement ever known to man, the Nation of Islam. And Malcolm say, these niggas fucked it up. And I'm inclined to believe it. What you think? So subscribe, share, and like. And these niggas will fuck anything up. They say you can cut fentanyl to eternity, but get it and see if you can. They didn't beat that shit up so tough and took all the fat out of that. You a goddamn fool to be selling something and you can't make nothing. Wow.